Because in meditation, we need to have an object of focus. Meditation always has something that we call a meditation object. That means an object of mind. That also means something that you're being mindful of or concentrating on moment by moment by moment. But going back to the thing of um, like meditation is, n is not clearing our mind. Clearing our mind of most thoughts is part of meditation. Um, but just clearing our mind in general is more like taking a nap versus to the body, what mm -hmm. exercise is to the body. Like I believe in naps. Naps are very useful and there's a great place for them. But at the end of a nap, you can't say that you exercised. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you wanted to, um, it's not the same thing. So just clearing our mind might be quite relaxing, but it doesn't have the long-term benefits of meditation like exercise has different benefits to mm -hmm. napping. Because in meditation, we need to have an object of focus. Meditation always has something that we call a meditation object. That means an object of mind. That also means something that you're being mindful of or concentrating on moment by moment by moment, keeping your mind focused on being present to an object of meditation moment by moment by moment. Mm. A really simple one is the sensation of the breath. For example, the sensation of the breath as it enters and leaves the nostrils. That's a very simple um, way to start meditation because it's easy to find that we're always breathing mm -hmm. if we lose it we can return to it quite easily um, an object of meditation is always something that when you focus on it your mind becomes more peaceful um, in fact you know our mind has the capacity for incredible amounts of inner peace wellness um, contentment, happiness. Mm. We just have to know how to access that. And one way of doing that is by letting go of our distracting thoughts and extraneous extra thoughts and mm -hmm. our negative thoughts and learning to make our mind peaceful, calm and still by mm. focusing on one subtle or meaningful thing moment by moment by moment and training in mindfulness and concentration on it. Um, again, even if we just have five, if you have 20 minutes, that's wonderful, but that can be daunting at first. Mm -hmm. So even if you just have five minutes to do that, you can have a really profound effect on, even just on realizing that you have the capacity to feel good. Mm -hmm. You have the capacity to feel peaceful and a kind of, um, a kind of peace and happiness that's not dependent on what's going on around you. Mm. Because right. otherwise it's like we're dependent upon things going our way externally mm -hmm. for us to be happy. That we're dependent on people saying what we want them to say, you know, the traffic lights being lined up and mm. external conditions being how we want them or feel we need them right. or else we can't be happy. And that's a very stressful place to be every day and a very vulnerable mm -hmm. position to be in. Whereas if we can learn to create our own happiness and peace of mind mm. from within... That's just coming from within. It right. doesn't cost us anything. It's not dependent on anyone else's behaving a certain way or things turning out a certain way. And that's really, really empowering and mm -hmm. really encouraging. And that we could then recreate that anytime we want through using something like meditation. Okay. So you had talked about a, having a qualified technique Mm -hmm. um, for approaching meditation. Can you elucidate that a little more? Uh, yes. I mean, just in the sense of, like, it is important to know, like you were saying, someone might be thinking, um, am I doing it right? You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> so there may be many different techniques, but we want to find one that we're comfortable with and that's tried and tested. Um, so like in, in Buddhism and in Kadampa Buddhism, um, there are... There are many different meditations that we do. And again, a simple starting place is meditation on the breath. Um, and then once we're comfortable with that, we can then move the object of our meditation to other things like um, meditation on loving kindness. That's a really powerful mm -hmm. meditation because not only are we centering our mind and training and 
mindfulness and concentration that will naturally bring in a peace and make us feel good. We're also bringing out the best in our human qualities and bringing out um, extraordinary uh, traits and states of mind that um, are improving who we are as a human being, making, giving us more self-confidence and self-respect in who we are, mm -hmm. informing the way we think and the way we act during the day, and, and through that improving our relationships, if collectively improving our society, the more of those kinds of minds we generate and bring into our world. Um, so we can also learn to meditate on things like that, um, increasing our patience, our compassion, our contentment, our wisdom. Uh, these meditations we sometimes call Lam Rim, um, which in Buddhism means stages of the path to enlightenment, meditating on these different insights and states of mind that move us along, m move our mind, our, us, along the spiritual path. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for example, on, on our Wednesday evening class downtown, um, we teach Lam Rim meditation and we go through a different Lam Rim meditation each week mm -hmm. and explain how to do that, what the meaning is, what the benefits are, and we do the meditation together and then have some discussion on that. Um, but still, starting with something simple like breathing meditation, at all the classes we have at Kadampa Meditation Center Austin, pretty much all of them we start with a guided breathing meditation. Um, and f for that, I mean, actually, if we probably have time to go into it a little bit. No, yes, yeah. please. Okay. <laughs> um, for that, if you actually want to think about what you're doing when you're meditating, no matter what kind of meditation it is or what your object of meditation is, you can divide meditation into four things, four activities or things, so that if you're wondering in that five minutes or 20 minutes, am I meditating? You can ask yourself instead, am I doing one or more of these four things? If the answer is yes, you can, you know, put a big check mark. Yep, I'm doing it. <laughs> if the answer is not, then it's like, oh, maybe I'm not. And we call those four things seeking, finding, holding, and remaining on the object of meditation, the object of mindfulness and concentration. So at any given point in that meditation time, you're doing one or more of those four things. The first two go together and the second two to go together. So seeking and finding go together and holding and remaining go together. So our first job in meditation is seeking and finding the object of mindfulness and concentration, the object of meditation. If that's something like loving kindness, that takes more time. That's a whole mm. contemplation, which is meaning, a meaningful aspect of meditation also is contemplation learning to contemplate things in a, a way that moves our mind in a meaningful direction. Mm. But that can take longer. If we're meditating on the breath, then that's an easier thing, but we still have to do it. We have to seek and find that subtle sensation of our breath, which means letting go of everything else. Because when we sit down to meditate, our mind's thinking about all manner of things, what somebody mm -hmm. said, what we've got to do later, um, our shopping list, what we want to eat, you know, all kinds of the pain in our knee, any the traffic outside, and it's not focused on our breath mm -hmm. or the object of meditation. So we have to move our mind away from those things and to the object of our breath. I like to think of this as um, my parents live by the seaside in, in the UK, and um, I haven't seen them here, but I'm pretty sure America must have them too, that uh, you get these big telescopes sometimes at the seaside, at the mm -hmm. ocean side, and there's a lighthouse not far from my parents, and you like put a coin in the telescope and it clicks on, and then you look through it and you can um, observe the, te the, the lighthouse or whatever, um, the cliffs or whatever it is, the mm -hmm. point of reference is. And I like to think of seeking, finding, holding, and remaining, learning that, like using that telescope. Mm -hmm. And as a little girl, um, well, those telescopes are quite heavy. <laughs> but the first thing you do, you put your coin in and it goes on. And um, the, the telescope is focused at the sidewalk on a piece of chewing gum or something. So this mm -hmm. is like our mind. Our mind's focused on a piece of chewing gum, like an object of resentment mm. or something. Like, why did they say that? And I'm going to do this. And, you know, so we've got to get it off the chewing gum so it can go toward the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. So we've got to pick it up and move it away from all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and move, keep moving it toward what 
we want to have as our chosen object of meditation. So in this case, that subtle sensation that's right there as uh, below our nose as, as our, the breath enters and leaves the nostrils. So like moving the telescope, you move it around and you see, you know, you see a bird and you think, well, that's not it. You don't want to get stuck on that. That's not it either. So you might move your mind and you have a memory from something that happened earlier. Okay, that's not it. You move your mind a bit more, maybe you see a boat on the sea and that's like something you're doing later. Well, that's not your chosen object of meditation either. It's the lighthouse or in this case, it's the breath. So you keep moving it until within that lens is appearing that uh, St. Mary's Lighthouse in um, Whitley Bay, Newcastle. <laughs> it's a very nice lighthouse if you're ever in that part of the world. Um, or to the sensation of our breath. And you want that to fill the center of your mind. So just like in the, with the telescope, you want it to fill the lens and you want to zoom in on it so there's no room for anything else. Mm -hmm. You just want to focus in on that. So you move it till the sensation of breath is right front and center in the middle of your mind. Then you've done the seeking, and now you've found the object of meditation. And now you move on to the next part, holding and remaining, or the next two bits, mm. holding and remaining. So now your job is to stop moving your mind, just like stop moving the telescope, and keep it steady so you can examine and stay, remain with that lighthouse mm -hmm. and, and study it. So now our mind's found our breath, but it wants to do all these other things. It wants to go swinging straight past that and onto the next thing, because mm -hmm. our mind's always wanting to move on to something else. So this is the other training, is in keeping our mind still and steady on one single thing. And this is the real exercise part, um, exercising that mental muscle of mindfulness mm. that enables us to train in concentration that brings real peace. And it's mindfulness that's able to hold our mind steady on one thing and re remember it, not forget it, moment by moment by moment. Mm. And that's a training in the beginning our muscle of mindfulness is not usually very strong. Um, uh, our normal modern Western lives don't really um, do much to train us, to help us with our mindfulness, right. so we have to help ourselves mm -hmm. by doing these kinds of things. Um, and even like I'm thinking as a girl, as a young girl with the telescope, the telescope is heavy, and I need a strong muscle, arm muscle, strong mm -hmm. arm to be able to hold the telescope in place. And, you know, it wants to keep dropping down back to the chewing gum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and our mind wants to go back to the resentment or something else. Right. So we have to just see how many moments, and it can just be moments. It doesn't have to be forever. You don't have to be great at this. Now, it's one thing to meditate. You don't have to be any good at it. You just have to do it anyway. Mm. And you just have to try to see how many moments you can stay present to the object of meditation. How many moments or how many breaths can you stay present to that sensation of your breath before your mind moves to something else or before it zones out, like unfocuses, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and at first, maybe it's just a few seconds, and that's completely fine. Uh, what matters, though, is that each time your mind wanders away or it spaces out, you notice that that's occurred. Mm -hmm. And you have the strength of mind, the determination, the quiet but clear determination to return your attention to your breath or to the object of meditation. And each time you return your attention, it's like you've exercised a muscle. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much that you failed because you lost the object. You succeeded because you noticed and returned your attention. Mm -hmm. And each time you do that, your mind's gotten a bit stronger. That's a strong, that's an action of strength. You're strengthening your mind. And the more you do that, the more your mind learns what it is to stay mm -hmm. focused and to hold an object. Uh, to begin with, we don't really know what that's like. So our mind's doing all the other things, but we're learning something new. We're learning mindfulness and we're learning concentration. And then we're able to stay a little bit longer, a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. So we're holding, we're practicing holding and remaining on the object. So we're holding with mindfulness so that we can remain on it moment by moment by moment, which mm. is concentration. And concentration brings inner peace. In Buddhism we say concentration is the cause of peace. Peace is the nature of happiness or the cause of happiness. Whenever we have inner peace, we have happiness. 
Whenever we lack inner peace, we lack happiness. Mm. There's no happiness separate from inner peace. We can't find that. You can't have an unpeaceful mind and a happy mind at the same time. Mm. But if you have a peaceful mind, you have a happy mind. Um, yeah, so actually even just a few moments of concentration brings a real feeling of contentment and happiness from within that we created ourselves, we cultivated ourselves. To keep up with our YouTube content, make sure that you've subscribed and clicked that notification bell. If you want to hear the full version of this podcast, along with new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday, you can find the Wellness Plus podcast on your favorite podcast apps, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. To see the full video version of this episode and to help keep this information free, you can sign up for wellnessplus.tv or become a Patreon supporter at patreon.com slash psyche truth. We've included all the links you need down in the video description. We at Wellness Plus specialize in all things health and wellness ranging from yoga and fitness to massage and ASMR. Whether you are looking to target specific areas of tension or want to enhance your general self-care routine, we provide the tools you need to feel better, look better, and live better. We have courses for every level, whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned pro. Our courses provide a wide range in difficulty to accommodate your evolving flow. Welcome back to Yoga with Jess. We are going to break down some really essential postures. We are going to rock out with some of the most essential ab exercises that you need to have the abs that you've always dreamed of. I've blended techniques to help you connect with students and you can be a rock star teacher. Wellness Plus is available on Amazon, which you can stream from your home on your phone, tablet, or TV. Join Wellness Plus today and get your first seven days free.